Hello Year 3 and welcome to my first literacy lesson online. How strange. You are all experts at this now, um, but I definitely am not, so try and bear with me. Um, so today's lesson, we are carrying on from all of the amazing work you've been doing with Mrs. Pedger. Um, on Friday, you did, oh, hopefully this will work. <laughs> Yeah, that's good then. <laughs> so um, on Friday, you um, got some ideas about how you can describe the setting in our Professor Pete story. You thought about what you could hear, what you can see, what you can smell, and all these different pictures. And that is what we are going to do today. So you've done all the hard work. You've come up with all the ideas. You discussed them with your grown-ups or you discuss them to yourself, and that is absolutely fine. Um, and today we are going to get all of those ideas and pop them into some sentences. So our lesson objective is to write a setting description. So you're going to be using all the ideas we came up with on Friday. So discussing our senses, what can we hear? What can we see? What can we smell? And including our VCOP into our sentences, which you are all so good at. Okay, so. Like I said, you've already done the hard work. This is a slide from Mrs. Pedger's PowerPoint from Friday. And this is one of the pictures that you can choose to describe today. And it's the picture that I've chosen and I've modeled um, a paragraph for you. So you spoke about what you could see. You can see the white, thick, the thick white smoke, um, the rubble from the bomb damaged houses, um, the demolished buildings. What can you hear? You can hear the siren or people panicking all around you. What you can smell, you could probably smell the smoke. Has anybody ever burned anything in the kitchen and you can smell the smoke? So that is a very big sense of smell that you might be able to smell if you were in this particular place at that particular time. So um, I have got back to these ideas and I've pulled some of the really good ones and I popped them into some sentences. Now, Mrs. Pledger has spoke to you about how important it is to have a setting description in a story. We are not going to know what it feels like to be in that particular place without a really good setting description. And we are going to do this now so that when we write your story for the rest of the week, you are going to be able to, to use these amazing ideas and just write it into your story so this is going to help you and set you up for when you come to writing that so i have written um, a short paragraph um, and i will read it to you so it says stepping out onto the street professor pete looked around in amazement and could not believe his eyes surrounding him was thick gray smoke that he could smell from even inside the time machine coming from a demolished, burnt-out building. Slowly, he stepped out onto the rocky, debris-covered road, which crunched beneath his feet when, with every step he took. Covering his ears, Professor Pete couldn't concentrate with the unpleasant, thundering siren noise repeating and the noise of people shouting, crying, and shoveling away the rubble. Was that an air raid siren? Just then, he began to understand where he was. Okay, so I have written a very short setting description of this picture here. Okay, so we are going to go through it step by step and see if you can spot certain things I've put into this paragraph. So firstly, have I mentioned what I can see? I'm going to give you a, few, a bit of time now to have a look through that, scan through it. Have I explained what I can see? Hopefully you were able to spot that I have included some things that I can see in this setting. So I have said that there's thick grey smoke. I can see the thick grey smoke. I've also written about the demolished burnt out buildings. I can see those buildings all burned clearly from a bomb. 
rocky debris covered road. So all the rubble that's come from the burnt buildings and blasted with the bomb blast has come onto the road. So I spoke about what I can see on the road in front of me as well, haven't I? So I've definitely included things that I can see. See that a big tip. I've done that. The next thing I want you to have a look for is, can, have I said about what I can hear? What can I hear when stepping out of the time machine? Hopefully you're able to spot that I have mentioned some things I can hear. There's a lot going on in this picture and there's obviously going to be loads and loads of noise. But that is what I definitely have to include in this second description. So I spoke about the crunching beneath his feet. So when Professor Pete steps out onto the debris, it's crunching beneath his feet. It's not an even terrain, is it? So it's crunching with every step he's taken. I've also spoke about the unpleasant thundering siren noise. Now, hopefully you will be able to hear the air raid siren um, in your World War II lesson. Um, but it is a really loud noise that was repeated and repeated to make sure that people um, heard it and knew that they had to get to a safe space. So I spoke about this because I can imagine that is what you can hear in this setting, perhaps. I've also spoke about hearing people shouting, crying and shoveling away the rubble. In the picture, you can see people shoveling away the rubble. Maybe people are shouting trying to get people to get their attention, people crying. Perhaps it was their house that was bombed and all of their things were all over the place. So I spoke about all those things that I might hear if I was Professor P stepping out of my time machine. Finally, what can I smell? Hmm, it's quite tricky to think about what you might smell, but have I mentioned it in this? Hopefully you're able to spot that I did. I said about the thick grey smoke that I could smell from even inside the time machine. So that shows that the thick grey smoke is so, so strong that you can smell it even from inside the time machine. It is surrounding us. It is everywhere. It's definitely something you would smell if you were where Professor P was. Okay. So... Not only do we have to talk about that, we have to include our VCOP OP year three, and you are so good at doing that. So our V is vocabulary, our C is conjunction, our O is openness, and our T is punctuation. And these are things that you have done in your lessons over the past week and a half now, I think it's been. So with our vocabulary, it's really important to include double adjectives and the work you are sending in shows that you are definitely still including them, which is brilliant. Our conjunction, so and, but, so, when, if, that, because, although, what do we use conjunctions for? Absolutely, they extend our sentences, don't they? They make them even better and even more detailed. Now I put some stars by after, before, and as well. Now, 3C might know why I've done that. Hmm, but I've done that because after, before, and as well as are amazing conjunctions that I love to see in your work. Okay, so perhaps you'll be able to put those into your second descriptions today, or perhaps you'll remember them for when you write your story for the rest of the week. Our O is our openers. Um, openness is what you use for your setting description um, of the playground scene from The Lion and the Unicorn. And you were all so good at using position openers, telling me where the things were. And that's what we're going to continue to do in this setting. Also, your adverb openers. So how is something happening? Slowly he walked, excitedly he walked, nervously he walked. And also time. When has it happened? Just then. After that, okay, tell me when. And finally, punctuation. It is so important we continue to use our capital letters and our full stop. And also extra, what are the commas? We usually use commas to do with um, double adjectives. Where does the comma go? It does, doesn't it? It goes between the two double adjectives and you are remembering that so well done yesterday. Also question marks, exclamation marks, and inverted commas. When do we use inverted commas? 
We use it when we're doing speech, absolutely well done. We decide what somebody says, don't we? But I don't know if we use speech today in a setting description, but it's definitely a piece of punctuation you might use in your story for the rest of the week. So, use exactly the same paragraph I wrote before. I want you to skim through this and see if you can find any double adjectives. Or maybe you could find a word you really like that you think I've been able to up-level. Right, then I hope you were able to spot some of these double adjectives. So firstly, I've got thick grey smoke. So I'm describing the smoke, aren't I? Thick and grey. Next, demolished, burnt out buildings. I'm not just saying that they're building, I'm describing them. They're not just normal buildings, are they? They've collapsed, haven't they? They are demolished. The bomb has really, really destroyed them. So that is why we are using adjectives to describe the building. I've also used rocky, debris covered road to describe the road. Another double adjective I've managed to get them in. Um, unpleasant, thundering siren noise. It's not just a normal siren noise. If I said just the siren noise and not describe it, you'll be like, is it a, is it a quiet noise? Is it a excitable, cheerful noise? No, I put it's unpleasant and it's thundering. You don't want to hear that siren noise. You know that that means something bad is going to happen, that the, that the plane are going to be dropping bombs. And it's thundering. It's there to get everybody's attention. It's so loud. Okay, then next I want openers. Can you spot any openers I have used in my paragraph? Remember, openers are at the start of our sentences, not the start of each line, but the start of our sentences. So can you spot any in there? Hopefully, you were able to spot some. I've included a few. Stepping out onto the street. I am telling you what Professor Pete is doing, isn't he? He is stepping out onto the street. Another one, surrounding him. Where's all that smoke? It's all surrounding him. Another one, slowly. But I'm not just telling you he stepped out onto the road. I'm telling you how, aren't I? I'm using an adverb opener to tell you that he stepped out slowly. Another one, covering his ears. So, um, Professor Pete is hearing this unpleasant thundering siren noise. I thought, what would Professor Pete be doing? He'll be covering his ears, won't he? But, oh, what is that noise? So I've told you what he is doing. And finally, I've used a time opener. Just then, he began to understand where he was. So I'm telling you a time. When did he begin to understand where he was? Okay. Finally, some conjunctions. Remember, and, because, which, that, all of those. Can you spot any in these sentences that I've used to extend my sentences even further? Hopefully, you will be you were able to spot some. So, I've got and, haven't I? He looked around in amazement, and he could not believe his eyes. Another one that surrounding him was thick grey smoke that he could even smell from inside the time machine. I've also used which. Slowly, he stepped out onto the rocky debris-covered road, which crunch beneath his feet with every step he could, could took. I've extended my sentence to include what you might hear as well. So can you see I've varied my conjunctions. I've not just said and, 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 or but, 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 but. I've tried to vary them. I've also included another and there, but perhaps I could have even changed that and and used a different conjunction to make sure that they were all varied. And finally, punctuation. I've included my capital letters at the start of my sentences and full stops at the end of my sentences. Now, I've also put capital letters um, for Professor Pete. Why have I done that? Why have I put capital letters for Professor Pete? Absolutely. It's because
because it is his name. It is a proper noun. So that needs a capital letter. Have I put commas in between my double adjectives? I have, haven't I? And that is so important to remember. I put these commas between these double adjectives. Absolutely. I've also used commas somewhere else over here. Second line from the bottom. People shouting, crying, and shoveling away the rubble. Why have I used a comma in that? Absolutely, commas in a list. I'm telling, I'm listing what the people are doing, the noise of people shouting, crying, and shoveling away the rubble. I've got a list there, and I needed to include the comma for my list. Are there any other bits of punctuation I've used that you can spot? Oh, there's a few others, isn't there? So I have included a question mark, haven't I? Was that an air raid siren? I'm asking a question, so I have to put a question mark at the end of that. And also, I put this funny thing in couldn't. What do we call that piece of punctuation again? An apostrophe, absolutely. And that is because I contracted two words together. Do you remember what those two words were before I contracted it to couldn't? Could not, absolutely. Professor Pete could not concentrate. So I contracted them together. I got rid of the O and replaced it with an apostrophe to make it couldn't. Absolutely. So I have been able to include what I can see, what I can smell, what I can hear, and the dis different VCOP techniques. Okay. So that is what I want you to have a go at today for your literacy task. So you are going to choose one of these pictures. Perhaps you'd like to do the same picture as me. Professor Pete stepping out onto the street and seeing all of this going on. Perhaps that's the setting description you'd like to do today. Or perhaps you'd like to look at the two different pictures of the children, the evacuees, on the station platform when Professor Pete runs down underground to protect himself and he sees the evacuees about to get onto the train, perhaps he'd like to do a description of that. What can you see? What can you hear? What can you smell? How are these people feeling? Okay, so that is also another thing you can describe today. So you're going to choose one of these pictures. Think about those ideas you came up with on Friday, because I'm sure you discussed lots and lots of amazing ideas. And then I want you to write a few sentences to describe this setting. You can go back to the slide, have a look at what you must include, or try and include, and what your VCOP is, if you've possibly forgotten what some of those are. And then you are going to write some of these sentences. Remember, if you can go back through at the end and think, oh, have I managed to include an opener? If you haven't, remember what we do with our blue pens in our classrooms. We, we edit, don't we? And we try and make them better. So at the end, that's what you can always do as well to challenge yourself and make your work better and better. So I hope you get on well with this. Um, you are going to be starting your story writing tomorrow. And these things we can include in our stories. Do you remember when we did our Elf on the Shelf story? And we wrote second descriptions about the trees, didn't we? The, the, the Christmas tree or the fireplace um, or the dining table. And we added some of those amazing sentences into our actual Elf on the Shelf story. So that is what we are doing with this second description today. Similar ways and similar formats to what we've previously done. So I hope you enjoy writing your second description ready for when we start our story tomorrow. Okay, thank you so much, Year 3, and I hope you have a super rest of your day.